Hey guys, this is Bharat Vaj with phonearena.com and this is the Oppo Find 7 that we recently unboxed. So we've been showing you the gaming, the benchmarks and all that. So in that order, we're going to show you the camera aspect of this phone. Technically, this is pretty much the same as the Find 7A with its 13 megapixel camera, the Sony stacked SEMA sensor and f2.0 lens. But we're going to show you some extra things today, a bit of uh, showing off of the flexibility of the camera interface and its features. So that's what we're going to see mainly in the camera review of the Oppo Find 7 today. So let's start with the specifics here. The Oppo Find 7 comes with the 13 megapixel Sony XMOR RS stacked CMOS sensor. If you had heard this already, then yes, it's already available on a lot of devices, including the Samsung Galaxy S4, the Lenovo K900, the Vibe Z and all those things. So even Oppo has been using the sensor since the Find 5, but the combination of the camera hardware has changed. For example, in the N1, they had the swiveling lens and also they had the f2.0 aperture lens with uh, dedicated algorithms, uh, new camera interface and all those things. So that has even more refined uh, with the Oppo Find 7. So we're going to focus on mainly those refined features and all the new additions rather than the performance of the camera because it's predictably the same and we are seeing some patterns here like Oppo produces really good pictures at the high end and the Find 7 is no exception. We'll talk about that too, we'll not leave that behind but let's start with the interface which is the main uh, thing that Oppo has in its camera. So this is obviously the main thing any camera has. This is the way you interact with the camera. So you can see that it's pretty similar to what we had seen with the Oppo N1, the Oppo Find 7A, obviously. So the new user interface has these buttons laid out uh, and is very, very minimal. So you have the gallery thumbnail at the top right. You have the mode buttons that uh, hover at the top right again. You have the shutter buttons for the video and the stills and both are shutter buttons. They are not modes. And over at the left, you have the front facing camera, you have the flash toggle and even more settings. So let's go through one by one. We'll first see the kind of modes that this phone has and packs. So this is pretty much exactly the same as the Find 7A, but there is some interesting additions that you have to see. For example, the HDR is pretty much the same. This is hardware based and it's accelerated using the dedicated chip. So the HDR photos are taken really fast and without shake. Ultra HD is the 50 megapixel mode that we saw on the Find 7A and it works the same way in the Find 7. It takes 10 photos and merges them into one, useful for bigger prints. So Beautify is self-explanatory, Panorama is self-explanatory and there is slow shutter which introduces 32 seconds of shutter speed. Yes, you read that right. It has 32 seconds and this is the only phone in the market that can go this long. Others are there, of course, for example, HTC recently introduced and they had like 8 seconds and even the Lumia 1020 can go up to only 8 seconds. But this can go up to 32 seconds and we have tested it out, we'll show you the samples. So that's the slow shutter mode. And then you have the audio photo, which is pretty self-explanatory. This takes a photo with the ambient sound, GIF and finally RAW. We'll explain that again in the end, but these are the modes that are available in the Find 7 camera and these are the still modes basically. So switching to normal will take you to the normal stills mode, but there is also the video mode that has uh, different settings and different modes. So this is the video mode settings and it has 4K, which is uh, the 3840 by 2160 resolution videos. You have full HD, you have 720p HD, you have 120 FPS slow motion, which is 720p again, and there is HDR. HDR video, which is uh, has been there since the uh, Find 5 and also hardware acceleration helps here and the normal SD mode. So we have selected 4K and we'll again discuss it later, but these are the modes that are available in the uh, settings. So other settings include storing, tap shutter, location, shutter sound. These are pretty normal. White balance is pretty self-explanatory. Scene modes, you have all the scenes that you will uh, see usually on a point and shoot. And then of course you have uh, the mirrored selfie which works only in the front facing mode and then you have the resolution 13, 10, 2 and 3. So this is 4 is to 3 and that's how it works. So that's the quick tour of the camera interface. That's what you have to see uh, mainly. 
But let's move on to the new features and the camera performance of these new features. So first we'll explore the normal mode which takes normal uh, daylight photos. The camera performance was pretty good and as expected and as predictable as the performance could be. It mirrored pretty much what we had seen with the N1. In fact, it was slightly better. So here are some daylight samples that we took. Now moving on to the next mode, as you can see the normal photos were pretty good but obviously due to the dimension of the small sensor, the photos get overblown sometimes. So we use HDR. HDR is obviously high dynamic range and you've probably seen this a lot of times since the Find 5. It's pretty much exactly the same way that it works with the Find 7. So here are some HDR samples with and without. You can see side by side how much of a difference it makes. And then you have the Ultra HD. So the Ultra HD mode is the mode where it takes a 50 megapixel photo from a 13 megapixel photo. So what happens is that it takes 10 photos and merges them into one so that you get a lot of detail. Uh, in fact, a detail that you can zoom into. That's what you get. So you get a lot of detail and all those 10 pictures are merged to create a 50 megapixel photo from a 13 megapixel. It's not extremely useful, but if you're going to use large prints for your photos, like for creating posters, then this might be really, really useful for you. But that's about it. Uh, it does nothing else. It just enlarges your photo to poster size and that's the way it works. So that's the Ultra HD mode, one of the special modes on the Find 7. Here are some samples that we have zoomed in pretty much to 100% to show you what kind of detail you can get. Now the next special mode is slow shutter. Slow shutter is really interesting because as I said earlier, this is the only phone in the world to have 32 seconds of shutter speed. That's remarkable. In fact, for f2.0, this uh, can mean that you can create beautiful light paintings. So previously we had about 8 seconds or 16 seconds, but 32 seconds is something really mind boggling and we did use it. And we did find, uh, find that it's pretty useful for light painting. So if you're into light paintings, it's a very creative field of photography which uh, uses light, uh, uh, streams of light to portray something. So that's pretty nice. And if you're into such stuff, you can do this on your phone. So that's the whole point here. You can have 32 seconds of shutter speed and have and create uh, really beautiful light paintings or even light trails with controlled exposure using this mode. So that's how it works. So we have some samples for you in the uh, slow shutter mode. So here they are. And finally, we come to the raw mode. So raw is pretty special because Oppo is one of the very few companies that is uh, allowing us to take raw photos other than the Nokia Lumia series and possibly the uh, Xiaomi Mi 2S and the Chinese variant of the Mi 3. So raw is supposedly a feature that has been enabled with Android L and hopefully we should be able to take raw pictures with a lot of phones. But the way it works in the Find 7 is kind of clunky. So what we had gotten as a result of using the raw mode was pink pictures out of white balance which we could not even correct. 
So it creates DNGs just like any other uh, normal modes. It takes the picture and obviously we can fool around with it. We can like uh, use it to produce better details and shadows and all that thing. But still it doesn't come out really well. It doesn't have the uh, right white balance and doesn't let us uh, freely uh, use the photo. So that's one constraint that we saw with the Find7 and, and we really hope they address it with the software update. We can still take a photo here which shows up just fine on the phone. It takes some time to take a photo and that's only the processing because it doesn't take much for uh, taking the photo but rather only storing it. it. It's pretty huge like 20 MBs per picture for example you can see the uh, details here. It's around uh, say is 1.88 MB then this is probably the JPG of that same photo but you do get the DNGs in the file explorer and you can indeed work around with them but they don't have the right white balance and doesn't work right well. So we hope that OPPO addresses this in a software update and we really hope the RAW gets better. So these are the special modes that you have on the Find 7. So pretty much this is feature packed if you ask us. Uh, unfortunately though you can't control all the aspects of the exposure you can only go into the slow shutter mode and then take a photo you cannot control various aspects of these and take a single picture so that's one small constraint but still this is a lot of options for a lot of professional users or enthusiasts who want to take great photos with their phones so that was a quick look at the all new interface features and its camera samples that you saw so moving back to camera performance, you already saw the daylight and HDR samples, but we also shot samples in macro and low light as usual. So let's start with macro here. You can take a look at these samples and let's talk about it. So as you saw from those samples, the macro shots came out pretty well and the f2.0 aperture really helps in creating the silky smooth bokeh that we saw. And even the focus performance and the overall performance in terms of detail and clarity does work well. Now moving on to the Achilles heel of most smartphones, the low light performance. So low light is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, as the Find 7a and the Find 5 and the N1. So the problem here is that there is a bit too much noise. And the exposure algorithms are kind of screwed up because uh, in one particular photo, which I we will show you in full, so one particular photo was uh, overexposed more than what we had initially uh, saw or rather wanted. So this is the overexposed photo that does not look like this in real. So this is one small problem that we noted in low light but otherwise we saw pretty decent performance and it does have a bit of noise but that makes the detail stay there and not go off. There is no aggressive noise reduction so that's one good thing about the algorithms. So here are some low light samples that you can see and judge for yourself. So overall that's what you get in terms of stills. Now moving to video, we have plenty of options again 4K, 1080p, 120fps slow-mo and of course even HDR. But we'll focus on 4K and slow-mo. We've already seen the slow-mo too but let's uh, see the 4K sample here which has pretty great details, nicely balanced colors and also pretty good audio thanks to stereo recording. So here is a video sample in 4K. Hey guys, this is Bharat Vaj with PhonoArena.com and what you're seeing here is the 4K Ultra HD video sample from the Oppo Find 7. So as usual, we are in our uh, uh, place that uh, shows you a great amount of detail and you can check out the ambient noise too which is always high here. And uh, yeah, that's the image quality and the sound quality that you can judge from this video sample. 
So this is the 4K video sample. Now let's check out the HDR one. Hey guys, this is the HDR sample from the Oppo Find 7. As you can see, it's a bit laggy, but it does have the high dynamic range that it promises. So that's the image quality of the same scene in the HDR mode. As you saw, the video was pretty good and Oppo has done really well in terms of video here this time. Previously, we had very poor performance, but this time they have done it better in 4K. So moving on to slow motion, you may have already seen the slow motion samples in the Find 7A, but here is a slow motion sample from the Find 7, which is pretty much exactly the same. So here you go. So that's about it for the camera performance. We hope you could judge uh, from these samples and you can take a look at the full resolution samples. The link will be up in the description below. You can take a look at the full resolution samples too, separately. So that's about it for the camera review. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learnt about the Find 7's camera interface and its new features. So do let us know what you think in the comment section below and also hit the like button and the subscribe button if you want more videos like these. Thanks for watching.